Before we get into this video, I want to just take a brief moment to tell you guys I have built my first set of LUTs packs. It's a very small pack, but these are something that I've been working on for quite a while. Uh, these, the first pack I've ever put together, it's uh, for design specifically for the two newest Black Magic cameras, the Pocket 6K and the Pocket 4K as well as the Canon C200. And what these LUTs do is they emulate the look of both of red uh, wide RGB gamma as well as Ari's Log C. So if you're interested in having these LUTs, make sure to follow the link in the video and also check them out. It's really affordable. And any, uh, any sort of help that you guys can help contribute to continue building this platform, I greatly appreciate it. But enough of that, on to the video. What's up everybody, James Jackson here, back again with another video. If you're new to my channel, I do tips and tricks for the film and video making industry. So if you like the content here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell. Yeah, I was out of focus, I don't care. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, stay up to date. We take chances, make mistakes, get messy like the frizz. So let's get to it. Ah, uh, I, I, I'm making this video because um, there's a, this is once again about the 1DX Mark II. Uh, I'm doing this video because there's a lot of um, misconceptions about the, about the, about the, the, uh, the 1DX Mark II, I'm sorry, not the Mark II, the Mark III, that have been floating around. A lot of it has to do with autofocusing, and I want to, for anybody that's sort of hearing all this stuff, I want to clear the air. Um, just so you guys have a clear understanding of what this is, because again, there's a lot of mis misinformation going about. So the first mis uh, misinformation that is being talked about is autofocus, and that's the big one that's really going about. Um, and the fact that the, the, what you're hearing is that there's no autofocus in uh, for, uh, 5.5K RAW and then full frame 4K 60, or 4K 4K, full frame 4K 50, full frame 4K 60. That is not entirely true. Yes, it is true. Full frame 4K 60 does not have dual pixel autofocus. However, the, uh, the saying that 5.5K RAW does not have autofocus is not true. Only in 50 and 60 frames per second is not, uh, does not have autofocus. If you're shooting in 24, 25, or 30p, in 5.5K RAW, you do get dual pixel autofocus and it is workable. And in 4K60, you do get to use it. Um, in uh, the 1DX Mark II, you can use autofocus. It's just that you have to use the crop mode, which by the way, is the um, same crop, crop that was in the 1DX Mark II. Um, and also, if you just so you're thinking, I'm not just making this up thick here. Take a look, listen directly from Canon themselves. This is what they had to say regarding the autofocus from their own video that they released on audio focus while recording video. For technical reasons, AF is not possible for raw video or during 4K at 60p or 50p. AF can cover anywhere from small single spot AF point to nearly the entire picture area when face detect plus tracking is selected. Movie servo AF can be turned on or off. When active, you can adjust servo AF speed. Great for adjusting the rate of rate. So y'all heard it there. You know, uh, 4K RAW is working. Um, now, the way they worded it is not the best. It's not the best and I totally understand why there is a bit of confusion the way they word it because it's like there's no they've said there's no autofocus due to you no know, processor limitations there's no autofocus when recording 5.5k or 4k at 60 frames per second now the way they wrote it that's kind of stuff and you may be thinking no it sounds like it's full well if you still don't believe me here is the specs for uh, that and as you can see from the timeline, that it's for that it is um, only in the 60 frames per second. If you go back, sorry, if we go back here for a second, you will see 
that if you look at the dots, it says autofocus not functional. It's only in 60 frames a second in 5.5K RAW. 24 frames, 23.98, and 29.97 RAW all shoot, allow you to film in autofocus. This is, and this is the official spec sheet that Canon has released on their website. This is on their website. So you can take a look there. And then if you go back and you see it again, you will notice that, and the DCI 4K, again, only 60 frames per second in the full frame, if you're using the full sensor readout, if you, as well as UHD, as well as DCI. However, if you crop in to the DCI 4K, you do get full frame, 60 frames per second. Um, but for some reason, still people find and ways to complain about. Now, because I've been hearing it's like, Canon is crippling it to protect the cinema lines. Now, I, do I think there's some validity to this argument? Yeah, I do. I do believe that there is some validity to it. Um, however, I do believe that there is a limitation of process because it's only in the 60 frames per second that is alpha. that. Now, some people might say, well, the C, well, the C500 can shoot for uh, 6K 60 frames per second and use the autofocus, and that is true. However, the C500 has a much bigger bo uh, body, has a much bigger ventilation system to, uh, to vent all that heat that it, it is generating while shooting 60 frames per second. So you gotta keep in mind, these are very different bodies. The, C, uh, the 1DX Mark III is a much smaller body that has to now process a lot of power. And the reason why I'm bringing this, I'm making this video in particular is because so many, I, I, it amazes me how people find ways to complain about things. Now, I know, and this is going to be, people are going to say I am a Canon fanboy. If you guys follow me, do I like shooting with a Canon? Yes, I like shooting with a Canon C200. But also, you, if you follow me, you know I do not hold their DSLR or mirrorless in the most highest regards. I just call it like I see it. The thing I always said about Canon was, Canon will not give you everything that you may want, but everything they give you is up to the highest standard possible. And that's how I just, and that's how I feel about it. They will give you what you will need, maybe not everything you want, but they will give you everything you need and they will give it to you at the max cost. And that is, and if you look at the actual specs of this, uh, you can totally see that right here in the spec sheets where you can clearly see like they're offering this stuff is this is the H.265 so this is the 10-bit 422 4k 60 that you can use the full frame on but you can see it's all I so 10-bit 422 4k 60 all I which means it's going to be much easier on your computer than other competitors that offer you 4K 60 or um, 6K at much more compressed rates. This is going to be way easier on your computer. It's also still much more efficient, but also it takes up so much more data, which is the reason why Canon, probably the thing was the reason why people always said Canon is, is now listening. I don't really buy that argument. I think is the fact that Canon was just sort of waiting for technology catch up with the technology of cameras and the technology of, proce of processing capabilities that the cameras have developed. Because you got to understand, it's not just a camera, it's also the processor. It's the media. The media plays a big importance. The size of the sensor plays a big importance. The resolution of that sensor plays a big importance. Because all of this is, takes up a lot of processing power. It takes up a lot of heat. It takes up a lot of data. And up until CF Express, not SD cards can't shoot at, as you can see here, the DCI. This is the DCI H.265, 60 frames per second, all I. If you use the full frame, it is 1,000 megabits per second. The SD cards on the, the Panasonic S1H, can't, they can't record that. And it, it just boggles my mind that people say Canon is crippling this camera when if you really sit down and dive in and think of the specs and you go, 
and actually really, really think about it. You're like, wait a minute. Canon is offering something that nobody else in this market is offering. If you really sit here and think about it, there's a lot of people that offer 4K60. My uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, which I am filming on right now, shoots 6K 60 frames per second. But it can't do that in full frame. The, um, the uh, Canon C200 that I own, which at this point right now is roughly the same price as the 1DX Mark II, shoots 4K 60 frames per second. But it can't do it in full frame. Can't even do it. Uh, it can do it. In, it can do 12-bit RAW, but it can't do it in full frame. The Panasonic S1H that everybody got on me about on my initial thoughts about that camera. A lot of people got on me about that camera, and I'm sitting here going, "Well, yes, it offers all these amazing features, and for four thousand dollars, it's again, it's a nice camera, but it's not offering full frame." 4K60, 10-bit 422 internally. First of all, there's no full frame 4K60 at all. You have to crop in to Super 35. Even if you factor in the crop mode to get the autofocus of the 1DX Mark III, the crop is still less than the crop of the, one, of the Panasonic S1H. The Panasonic S1H is a 1.5 times crop. The 1DX Mark III is a 1.3 times crop. So the crop is still significantly less. If, you're still, if you want to just even put that in. But then to say the 1DX Mark III is offering full frame, 4K60. Think about it. No one, no one is offering that. Not Panasonic, not Blackmagic, not Sony. Sony hasn't even offered a 10-bit camera. They're still only offering 8-bit cameras that can only output 8-bit. This camera is shooting, forget the RAW for a second. Forget the RAW, forget the 5.5K 12-bit RAW internal recorder. Forget that just for a second. This camera is offering a 10-bit, all-eye, full-frame, 60 frames per second option. And people are bitching that it doesn't have autofocus at that high processing power. It's giving you a codec and uh, that can not stress your computer so much. But, uh, but, but people are complaining about the autofocus not being in 4K 60 full frame. Even though, even if you factor in the crop, it's still less of a crop than any of its competitors uh, that is of a DSLR mirrorless form factor. There's nobody else that can offer what this camera can offer. So hearing people constantly just, again, I have, and again, I haven't even touched the camera, but it just amazes me some of the bit of the bias that people have. And again, I, I know this is gonna sound like I am a fanboy. It's just, but it's like, it amazes me. Canning is offering people something that nobody else on this market, in this market. I'm not talking about cinema lines, so I'm not talking about any cinema line. I'm just talking in the DSLR mirrorless body form factor uh, market. Canon is offering something that no one else is offering in that market. For now, look, the closest thing you could probably make is the Komodo, but the Komodo is a Super 35, the Red Komodo, but one, we don't even know the full specs of the Red Komodo. The only th and everything that we hear about is only it's going to be a Super 35 camera. If we're really going to start factoring the cinema cameras. The Z Cam E2, I guess, would be the next one, but it doesn't have the autofocus capabilities that the 1DX Mark II I mean, sorry, the 1DX Mark III has. You, I guess within the next thing you got to go to is the Sony FX9, but that offers, but the, again, the 1DX Mark III offers 5.5K raw internally. It lets you use the full sensor, lets you take control over the full sensor, where Sony limit has, has basically said they will never put 6K, allow you to shoot 6K in the Sony FX9. They'll never let you do that. They've came out, they flat out said that. So you can do that with a, with a camera that is $3,500 less, $4,500 less than the FX9. The next thing would be its bigger brother, the C500 Mark II, $16,000. So 
you can make an argument ten a, a camera that's ten thousand dollars more because the Mavo LF, I, I, which I got a chance to play at NAB last year, loved it, doesn't have autofocus capabilities. So again, why are people, I guess my thing is why are people getting so, why are people really throwing fits as like, this is, this is a deal breaker, this is, this is not going to happen, about not having autofocus. Because I, I, I've seen a couple of videos like, Canon is crippling because of protect, I'm like, I'm like, but who in the market, is, uh, uh, crippling would mean, crippling doesn't mean that you don't get every, if anybody that actually thinks you're going to get everything from a flagship cinema line camera down into a DSLR, you're, you're, you're deluding yourself in multiple ways. One, you're deluding yourself into thinking that they would put all that, just from a, purely from a business practice, it makes no sense. Forget flagship or hindering that. From a market standpoint, it doesn't make sense to make a perfect camera and you, 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 you ruin the market just doing that. The other thing is just that it doesn't make sense for, it doesn't make sense for Canon at all to just basically try to attack. But it's not like Canon crippled it. I don't call that crippling. I'm just saying building cameras for different markets. And that's what camera do, Canon does. Canon, so does Sony, as well as Panasonic, as well as Blackmagic. They all build, nobody builds the one camera to do everything. Nobody does it, and nobody will ever will. As much as the you know, marketing may try to make you think they will, no one is going to make a camera that's going to be perfect in every single situation. Nobody's going to do that. They're going to make a camera that is best for certain markets, and then maybe add some other markets into that slightly. Especially not a camera that's in a uh, sort of, per, um, and I'm getting, I'm talking video, not photography. From a video perspective, it's a lower market. But I still don't call this crippling. Crippling is what Sony did to the FX9. Something that clearly there could be a capability of, they clearly have the capabilities of making the FX9 shoot 6K, but they refuse to do it so they can protect the Venice. That's crippling. What Panasonic did with the S1, if you've, done, if you've seen the S1, the S1 can, can, does have the capabilities of doing dual native ISO because it has the same circuitry. They just sort of disengaged it to protect the S, to make the S1H look better. But if you actually have worked, but if, if you watch people's videos, if you see, if you get Vlog and then you switch it over, um, and you, if you switch to 4,000, you'll notice the noise reduction uh, immediately at 4,000 ISO, similar to the S1H. All, the, all these camera companies, that's crippling to a certain extent. But even then, I wouldn't call it crippling. This isn't crippling. This... Because uh, crippling means there's something, because to me, to, for it to cripple, there has to be something else in the market that can compete with what you are offering, and you are cutting it less below what is offered in the market to protect something in the higher end. You can make the argument that, about the EOS R. That could be just the limitation of the, of, of the media that formats that they were. But you can make an argument for the ESR about that. You can make an argument for the 5D Mark IV about that. You can't really make that argument about this camera because no one in the market is offering what this camera, for what it's capable of doing, nobody's offering. In terms of a video, from a video perspective. And again, this is a camera that's really designed for sports photography, um, wildlife photography, and journalism, fast shooting journalism that that's not video is not necessary its main priority but for the video features that it has even even the cameras that are supposed to be more dedicated to video like the s1h doesn't have the features that this camera can do it can't do full frame 4k 60 it can't even do 10 bit 422 4k 60 this camera can do it can, it can't even do 10 bit 422 all live 4K60. Canon can do all that just, and that's just the 4K. 
and that's the and that's just the 4K HEVC. We're not even talking about the raw internal raw recording. With this S1H, you gotta get an external recorder. The Pocket Cinema Camera 4K can do all could do this, but it's a Micro Four Thirds camera. The, the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K is a Super 35 camera. The Z cams, the Z the Z6 can only do 4K up to 30 frames per second. The 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 EOS R can only do 4K up to 30 frames per second. The S1 can do 4K 60, but again, it can't do full frame 4K 60, 10 bit 422 all I. I get and I again, I'm not even talking about the raw. So, I think people are. I, I, at this point, to me, if you are complaining or saying that Canon is crippling this and, can, and Canon is not giving what video makers are needing, then to me, it's like you're just, I, I feel that they're, you're just delusional because Canon is offering more than what anybody is offering in this, mar in this specific marketplace of mirrorless DSLRs. Canon with a 1DX Mark II, pricey. Yes, it's pricey, but no one is offering. And also, if you go back, to it, the spec feature, it offers 120 frames per second. And then if we go back to the first, to the autofocus page, you will see it offers 120 frames per second and you can do autofocus with it. That is something not even the C200 can do. That is not something the C500 can do. That's not something that the C700 can do. It can't do 120 frames per second. Uh, using a full sensor readout and shooting autofocus, it can't do that. This is this, so I think people need that that are really trying to hamper and hound on this camera really need to fall back and really see the bigger picture. Anyway, this is my uh, thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about this. Let me know. Leave a like. Leave a comment below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care, everyone.